Hi, and welcome to a Spider Strategies training video. In this video, we'll be covering the fundamentals of extending calendars in QuickScore. First, let's address why, and then we'll get into the how to extend calendars. First, the why is when a new calendar year begins, you may find that you're unable to access months or quarters or other time periods in the new year via QuickScore, and thus you need to extend your calendars in QuickScore. Allow me to show you a demonstration of why and how to extend your calendars in QuickScore. Before getting into the demonstration, let's just set the scene. I will be the training manager at Mobile World Inc. I'm responsible for inputting month-end actual values for training revenue into the financial profit and loss scorecard. And I'll be logging into QuickScore as though it's January 2nd of the year 2020. Let's get into the demonstration. I've logged into QuickScore and have, of course, landed at my home page. I'm going to navigate into the scorecards section of QuickScore and find the organization that I want to work within, which in this case is the financial organization, verify that I'm working with the appropriate financial profit and loss scorecard, and I'll extend or open the revenue theme to see that we have three different revenue measures, product, training, and book revenue. Again, as the training manager, I'm responsible for updating the training revenue actual values each and every month. Speaking of the months, let's look towards the upper right and acknowledge that because I've logged in on January 2nd of 2020, QuickScore is automatically showing me the most recent complete time period, which is December of 2019. And I can see in the graph, as well as in the actual and threshold values area, of this view that I don't yet have actual values inputted for December of 2019. I'll do what I do every month and go to the edit button down in the actual and threshold values area and provide the actual numbers for December of 2019. December was kind of a slow month for us in training because of the holidays. So we well, uh, we only achieved $255,000 in revenue that particular month. After giving the, sec the system a second to refresh, I can see the values presented in both the tabular actual and threshold values area towards the bottom of the screen and, of course, on my line chart at the top in the upper right. Let's now imagine that we move forward a month and it's February 2nd of the year 2020 and my desire is to input uh, actual training revenue values for the month of January 2020. What I'd like to do is just navigate ahead using the calendar period selector in the upper right into the month of January 2020, but I see that the rightward pointing arrow or chevron is grayed out. Anytime you see that, that is a direct indication that the QuickScore system does not have a calendar period it knows how to help you move forward into. If I try and use the drop down to potentially change from a monthly view to maybe a quarterly view for again the year 2020, again I see that I don't have 2020 available to me as a choice. And again similarly if I move to yearly and try and access the year 2020, the last year I, I can access is 2019. So effectively my job from here is to extend those calendars into the year 2020. To achieve the extension of calendars, you do it within the settings area. So in the lower left corner, I'll click the settings gear, and within the settings menu, under the setup area, I'll click on calendars. I can see that presently we have four different calendars existing within QuickScore. A monthly calendar, a quarterly calendar, and a yearly calendar, all of which are based on standard Gregorian periods of, of time. We also have a custom fiscal years calendar. What we need to do is just investigate all these calendars and see that in each case, for monthly, it ends in December of 2019. For quarterly, if I scroll to the bottom, it again ends in December of 2019. And not surprisingly, if I look at the yearly calendar, again, we'll see that it also ends at the end of December of 2019. So I need to extend those standard calendars. I'll start with monthly. I'll click on it on the left. And then towards the upper right, simply click Extend Calendar. I simply need to provide the month 
and year and date that I want to extend the calendar to. So in this case, I'll ex extend it through December of 2020 and the last day of December, which is the 31st, and click Extend. Next, we'll go to the quarterly calendar. Again, towards the upper right, select Extend Calendar. Once again, navigate to the month, year, and date that I'd like to extend it through. Again, the 31st of December 2020. And then lastly, we'll click on the yearly calendar and extend that calendar once again through December of 2020. Again, the last day of the month and click Extend. So you can see that extending standard Gregorian calendar based calendars is very easy within QuickScore. You just have to pick the date that you want to extend it to. With regard to custom calendars, such as the fiscal years, there's a little more work involved because the system doesn't know how to automatically extend a custom, in this case, fiscal calendar. So all you do is click Add Period towards the upper right and just manually provide it with a name. In this case, let's go ahead and extend it through fiscal year 2020 because we're in the year 2020. It will start on October 1st of the year 2019 and it will extend through September 30th of the year 2020 and click add period. So I've shown you how to extend calendars both automatically and custom in a custom fashion. Let's pause, go back to our scorecard and see the results of those calendar extensions. I'll click on the scorecards section header and again navigate into the financial profit and loss scorecard open the revenue theme and again select my training revenue measure and see that I'm presently again viewing it for December 2019 but the rightward pointing arrow or chevron for the calendar period selector arrow area is available so I'm now able to move forward into January and February and March and any other month within the year 2020. So for January 2020, I am now able to do what I desire to do here at the, the beginning of February is again to provide actual values for the month of January. And in this case, we had a much better month of $262,000 and we'll click save and pause for a second and refresh the browser and give the software an opportunity to, to present that data both graphically on the line graph at the upper right as well as in the tabular view in the actual and threshold values to see that there's our 262,000 which has received a normalized score of 8 and of course a color of green. I hope this training video on extending calendars in QuickScore has been helpful to you. Thank you for watching and please feel free to contact me personally at any time with any follow-up questions. I'm Tom Keating, I'm the Training and Customer Experience Consultant at Spider Strategies, and I can be reached at tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com or learn at spiderstrategies.com. Again, thank you for viewing and have a great day.